It's cold outside, but how cold-blooded was the company that made your goose-down jacket with real fur as decorative trim? The blood on your Canada goose jacket, next on The PETA Podcast. Welcome to The PETA Podcast. I'm Emil Guillermo, your host for this behind-the-scenes look at PETA, the largest animal rights organization in the world. Here we talk to the key players at PETA and the movement and ask them about how animal rights change their lives and how they stay motivated to make the world a better place for the animals. On today's episode, PETA campaigner Ashley Byrne on why there's nothing warm about Canada goose, uh, not when it comes to that decorative fur trim taken from a trapped coyote. Cats and dogs have accidentally been been caught in traps that were, you know, that were set out to trap coyotes and other animals before. So the coyotes are, are trapped in these steel traps. And then when the hunters come back for them, if they've survived the elements, if they haven't been killed by a predator while they were, you know, unable to move, they are strangled, shot, stomped to death, beaten, just killed in these horrific ways for for this fur that is is doing absolutely nothing on this jacket except serving as, you know, just a little bit of decorative trim. And of course, there's what's done to the ducks and geese. Some of the birds are dead, then plucked, others live plucked. The difference when we continue on the PETA podcast. But first, thanks again for joining us here at the PETA podcast. Please share a link with friends. Let them know the animals have a voice on the PETA podcast. And keep binging. There's lots to listen to here on the PETA podcast. While you may be thinking about staying warm these days, listen to episode 30 before thinking about a mohair garment. And in episode 37, hear why wool is a fabric of pain. That's in episode 37. Remember, if you're on Apple Podcasts, don't forget to rate and review the show. It helps the algorithm know that PETA has a podcast on the issues important to you. Now, if you really want to help the animals, you can always just hit the Donate Now button at PETA.org. And if you're high-tech and have Amazon's Alexa, it's as easy as saying, Alexa, donate to PETA. And now to our episode. Ashley Byrne is an Associate Director of Campaigns for PETA, currently focused on Canada Goose. That company says the feathers in the goose down jackets often come from dead birds, which makes the use of the feathers a kind of recycling effort. But as Ashley explained, that doesn't excuse how the birds are cruelly slaughtered for meat. Some suppliers to the company actually live pluck the birds, but the birds aren't treated much better and often die from the plucking. And then there's the coyotes, who died to provide a coat's decorative trim. A lot of blood was spilled to make a Canada goose coat. Here's my conversation with PETA campaigner Ashley Byrne on the PETA podcast. You know, a lot of people know Canada goose from the James Bond actor Daniel Craig, right? And they they took one look at a photo of Daniel Craig in that coat and said, I need one of those. But PETA says this is disastrous for coyotes and geese. So tell me, what is so wrong with Canada Goose, the company, and and what they do? Well, Canada Goose's uh, coats are are terrible for animals from, I mean, j- whether you are talking about the coyote fur on on, you know, on the hood or the down feathers, um, you know, in that are used as filling inside. There is cruelty in every stitch of these jackets. Um, they use trapped coyote fur. And these are from coyotes who are caught in steel traps. And then after they wait, sometimes for days, um, for the hunters to come back and find them, they are strangled, shot, bludgeoned, stomped, just killed in, in, the most horrific ways. Um, And, and, you know, that's if they don't chew their own limbs off trying to escape. Um, And then, you know, the filling is from ducks and geese who are violently killed 
and they're they're killed for their their meat and their feathers. Some of them even have their throats slit while they are still totally conscious and able to feel pain. So these coats are just a nightmare for animals. Describe that again. That the, 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 the birds are out in the wild. Do they they get the birds and they bring them in somewhere and they do this or how is this process done? The coyotes are trapped in the wild, but the birds come from farms where they are raised for for their meat and their feathers. These ducks and geese are raised on farms, and then when it's time for them to be slaughtered, they are very often hung up by uh, by their feet. They have their throats slashed with no painkillers in front of other bir- you know other terrified birds who are next, and then they just are left to bleed out in that manner. So, you know, and, and on top of that, PETA has investigated suppliers that Canada Goose uses. And we found, we fa- that's, that's already cruel. We found cruelty on top of that. We found the birds being handled violently by workers, being tossed around and having, you know, being handled in a manner where sometimes their bones were broken by the time they even made it onto this, you know, assembly line to, to have their throats cut. You know, again, there, there is just cruelty in every stitch of these coats. When you talk about Canada Goose, the company, and you talk about suppliers, so Canada Goose gets these ducks from the suppliers and does Canada Goose object to anything? Do they say, hey, let's do this a little nicer? Do they say anything like that? Or, or do they say, uh, let's get it from a different farm that's nicer to these uh, these animals. Do they they have do they raise any objection at all? Canada Canada Goose the company. Well, Canada Goose has thrown around words like you know humane, um, and and you know they like to sort of put things out on social media saying that that they uh, are are using products that are are from animals who have not been treated cruelly. However, I mean, just nothing could be further from the truth. There is no humane way to, um, you know, get the feathers from ducks and geese to be used for down. Um, Whether you're talking about, you know, geese who are live plucked on a farm, you know, just having their their feathers ripped out by the handful or whether you're talking while they're still alive or whether you're talking about um, about ducks and geese who are, you know, who are slaughtered and then and then have their feathers taken um, you know, these these farms treat the birds like they are just products on an assembly line. Um, and any time you have a setup like that, you know, profits are always going to be the first priority and the animals will suffer. So aside from, you know, sort of trying to publicly smooth things over, Canada Goose has not done a thing to try, you know, to try and make things better for animals. Are there suppliers that they could go to that could make the process a little kinder to the animals or is it all just bad you know it's all bad but what they could do is what you know, so many other uh, companies have done they could switch to high tech uh you know materials that don't that don't use any animals in the first place i mean so many companies right now especially this season are using materials like primaloft and thermoball and uh, plum tech um, you know, these are, they're not only better for the animals, they're actually better at keeping out, you know, the different weather extremes, they keep you warmer, they're better for the environment. Um, so really, Canada Goose has other options. They're just choosing to, to you know, to kind of keep with their bad old ways and and not progress. Now, one thing I noticed, and you might be a, a fashion maven as well, that when you talk about those alternatives, you're talking about maybe layering up and making things look bulkier and, you know, instead of, you know, because I know a lot of people didn't, they they stayed away from down because they thought, oh, down makes me look all puffy. But, you know, the alternatives don't make you look better. Uh, is is that a consideration? I mean, has, have they made, have the people who use down, have they made down better? You know, the thing about down and other animal products is that you know, there's really, there's really only one place you can go with them. I mean, these, you know, when you're, when you're just ripping a product off the, you know, the back of an animal, you're kind of stuck with what you've got. Whereas these, these high tech materials that so many companies are choosing to use now, 
they just keep getting better. You can keep improving on them. You can keep making them more streamlined. You can keep making them, you know, warmer. And, and, um, so yeah, you know, I, there really haven't been, um, any advancements in, in down coats because there really isn't anything else you can do. Whereas these, you know, these newer alternatives, I mean, sure, you know, it's always going to be kind of a sporty look, but, you know, you know, if you look at the companies that are using the alternatives right now, I know some of my favorite fashion companies this season have been very proud in their ads. They've been boasting about the fact that they're using vegan down alternatives made from things like plastic bottles. And again, you know, they they do just keep getting better. There is no reason across the board, whether you're talking about fashion, function, cruelty, the environment, to be using a product like down. So we get down and you've done the investigations and I'm sure there's video of some of the investigations. We have quite a bit of video on uh, PETA.org. And tell me about what people, if they go to PETA.org, what will they see? What are the kinds of things that they'll see that will that might make them stop and think before they get anything with down? People tend to incorrectly assume that that down is a benign product because they think, oh, well, you know, to get feathers, you don't have to have to kill these birds. The fact is that the birds are being killed. I I think if people see how these birds are killed, they would want nothing to do with this product. You know, if you see these birds who are sensitive, intelligent animals, um, you know, just like our dogs and cats at home. Um, you see them living in cramped, filthy conditions on farms and then, you know, being violently grabbed and, you know, shoved into shackles and having their throats cut. I think most people would never dream of doing something like that themselves. When you really think about it, most people don't want to pay for that either. Once they actually see the cruelty with their own eyes, you know, I, I think that that very few people want to support that. The, the geese, the birds, they come to the, uh, the worker. They, do they actually rip the feathers off its, off the bird's back? That is what some down suppliers do. My understanding is that Canada Goose is using, um, suppliers where the birds are being killed for their meat and their feathers. So the feathers are being taken from dead birds. But again, you're talking about birds raised in cramped, filthy, deprived conditions. Um, so they're leading miserable lives and then dying violent, terrifying deaths. And then one of the things about the the birds when they when you rip the feathers off of them, what do they do? I mean, do they seek a some kind of mouse down or something to to cover up, or they they give them blankets to to make themselves feel warm? Or what happens once a, the feathers uh, get ripped off? I mean, are they so debilitated that they die anyway? Or can they regenerate the feathers? Many many birds do die of shock or exposure after they are, you know, after they are live plucked by down suppliers. The ones who survive uh, are forced to go through, you know, this terrifying, painful experience of having their feathers ripped out by the fistful um, on, on multiple occasions before they are eventually slaughtered. Um, you know, and it's hard to say who has it worse because, you know, I mean, wh- whether these birds are are just dying from from the, you know, the the violence and the, you know, the exposure or whether they're just going through this again and again and then being slaughtered. They they just have miserable lives and no, per- you no, know, nothing is done to keep them comfortable once they are missing these feathers. Um, in fact, very often they suffer from from wounds after, um, you know, not surprisingly, after going through this live plucking process, the most that's ever done for them is that these wounds will be stitched up uh, by hand with no painkillers, um, you know, by workers who are hurrying. I would also mention that the workers are paid um, by the pound. And so their their priority is to just pluck these birds as fast as they can. Um, so they, you know, they're, these, uh, ducks and geese are treated very roughly. Uh, we're the, we're the suppliers generally in, in the, in the United States or in Canada? On, on down farms that do, uh, that use this live plucking process, you know, I, I know that we've seen, you know, some of them overseas, some in Europe, I believe we have found this 
to be something that happens in the United States as well. Uh, with the Canada Goose suppliers specifically, I believe they use suppliers located in Canada. And again, um, I know that when we investigated, the, the supplier that we investigated was not one that used live plucking. But what we found was was just as terrible. I mean, we found the birds being rounded up very roughly. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, to the point where some of them were crushed or suffocated, grabbed by their necks and crammed into crates. And, you know, again, these processes so violent and, you know, that many of them don't even survive, you know, to get to slaughter. They were confined in cages for in these little cramp cages for up to 24 hours uh, while they were while they were waiting to be slaughtered. And, and then they're they're killed right in front of each other. I mean, these are, again, these are intelligent animals. These are sensitive animals. Um, and to put them through that kind of pain and terror is, is just uh, hideous. And so you would never see a company like Can the Goose tell the truth, or it's any, any company that uses down, tell the truth in their marketing materials about down. Like you wouldn't see a label on a jacket saying live pluck. You know, from live, nope. <laughs> you would never see them admit to that. Absolutely not. Um, no, their their marketing is is very deceptive. I mean, I've gone through the catalogs, and you know, they kind of there's the Prima Loft, uh, and there's the other the Thinsulate, and all the other materials that are out there. I always see the catalogs also that have the down, and they just kind of downplay it, like this is down, and. They try to make it more form-fitting and slimming so it doesn't look like the puffy jackets of old, so you look like the Michelin tire man or something like that. It's it's a little more fashionable. But all right, so tell me about that, about the coyote fur, because the down is has a function in terms of being warmth, you know, providing warmth, but the coyote fur is purely decorative. And what happens? How did they get that fur again? The the fur trim on Canada goose coats comes from coyotes who are trapped in the wild. And, you know, of course, these traps, they have no discretion about who they're catching. So they can catch a nursing mother whose, you know, whose pups will then die because, you know, she she won't be coming back to them. They can catch a, an animal who wasn't even the target in the first place. You know, people's cats and dogs have accidentally been been caught in traps that were, you know, that were set out to trap coyotes and other animals before. So the coyotes are are trapped in these steel traps. And then when the hunters come back for them, if they've survived the elements, if they haven't been killed by a predator while they were, you know, unable to move, they are strangled, shot, stomped to death, beaten, just killed in these horrific ways. For, for this fur that is is doing absolutely nothing on this jacket except serving as, you know, just a little bit of decorative trim. And, you know, when PETA uh, first put out a shocking video that showed how coyotes are trapped for the lining on Canada goose coats, it got more than 16 million views on Facebook in only three days. It, it, people went crazy and Canada Goose was so flooded with comments from people who, who were just devastated when they saw, you know, just this horrific process and people just demanding that they stop using fur. They couldn't keep up with it. I mean, they were deleting them as fast as they could and they just kept coming. This coyote fur trim, it is totally unnecessary incredibly cruel and wasteful. And so many companies have have just been dropping fur right and left. There are fantastic options out there, um, you know, for for any company that does want the look of fur, the faux fur that is available right now is is, I mean, it's, you know, it's better for the environment. It's, you know, it just it looks very realistic. Um, there is just no excuse to be using coyote fur if people go to peta.org what what will they see on the the videos they will see terrified suffering coyotes with their legs caught in traps struggling to get away frightened it's very hard to watch it's it's not that different if it's like watching a, a dog caught caught in a trap i mean they're struggling they're terrified they're in pain you know and that there is nothing they can do 
you know, some of these animals are so desperate to get away, um, especially a mother, you know, who, who knows that she has pups waiting for her, that they, they will try to chew off their own limbs sometimes to escape. Yeah, it, it, it is just hard to watch. And there is, you know, you, when you try, when you kind of try to contrast that with the language that Canada Goose uses on their website, trying to say that they, that they abide by humane trapping standards. It's absurd. There is no such, there is no humane way to catch an animal in a steel jawed trap, um, make them wait for up to 72 hours in, in fear and pain and then kill them. There, there is, there is no way in the world for that to be humane. So is there any way that Canada Goose can justify what they, what they do and, and how they use coyotes in their garments? None whatsoever, especially since so many brands are making um, competing products that that have the same look, um, you know, that that have, a, you know, a fur trim that just happens to be faux fur that have, you know, just incredibly warm, eco friendly, um, you know, fillings that keep out the environment that are that are not made from animals. If other brands can do it, Canada Goose could be doing it. Now, you'd think that most people, once they see this, uh, these videos, would realize that wearing a coat uh, like that isn't worth it. And Canada Goose, uh, you know, they want you to think that wearing a coat like that is going to turn you into James Bond. But we know <laughs> that doesn't happen. But the, the, cap, the company has capitalized on this. Are, are they giving coats to celebrities to promote these coats? Canada Goose, um, they, they send coats to celebrities. They sponsor any film festival, you know, that will, that will accept their sponsorship, like Sundance and the Toronto Film Festival. Um, and I think a lot of celebrities wear these coats without really thinking about it. I think they get one for free and they put it on, you know, they put it on and they end up photographed in it and, and people copy them. Um, I can tell you that many celebrities after, you know, receiving a, a, a letter and information about, you know, the cruelty that um, is built into these coats, uh, but, you know, we, we see that they do stop wearing them. And I can tell you, um, you know, just um, being here in New York City and going to many demonstrations outside the Canada Goose store here, I think a lot of people will buy a jacket with fur trim, assuming that it's fake. And when people see these, you know, these videos, when they see, uh, you know, the images on, on leaflets and posters, um, a lot of people will take off the fur trim on the spot, throw it away or, um, you know, um, just hand it over to activists and, and you know, ask them to, to you know, do something with it um, on their behalf. I mean, a, a lot of people buy these coats without really thinking about what has gone into it. Yeah, it doesn't make sense that they would that that a company would actually kill an animal for the for trim. So if you find out the truth and you're wearing these these coats, it it can be really it can be that moment for people to say, "I'm not wearing this." Oh, t well, tell me what actually what has Peter been doing about this uh, this kind of marketing. Uh, process that the uh, Canada Goose uh, has, you know, to give away these free coats? Well, you know, we've launched a high profile campaign exposing the truth about, you know, the fur trim on Canada Goose jackets, the down filling in Canada Goose jackets. That involves everything from organizing, you know, protests on the street outside their stores to um, you know, posting videos on social media of how coyotes and ducks and geese are suffering for these coats, writing to celebrities who are photographed in these coats and, and letting them know what they're wearing. Um, we've even purchased stock in Canada Goose when the company went public. Um, we became shareholders so that we could, um, you know, have, have a voice that way so that we could attend their meetings and eventually, you know, submit shareholder resolutions. Um, and this is something that we've done with many other companies. So we are, you know, just taking every opportunity that we can get to expose the truth about what this company is doing. I guess now is their prime time. It's getting colder and people are saying, I need something warm. Let me grab that coat. Do you have a sense of 
whether or not you're reaching the public and the consumer and that they're changing their ways or where do you assess where you are now in the struggle against Canada Goose? Well, I think since most people aren't in favor of real fur and and don't want to support cruelty to animals, I think we're, we're at a point where it's all about educating the public about what these, you know, what, what is, you know, contained in these coats. I, I think we're at a point where we are just trying to reach their potential customers and and let them know, you know, what they're buying. Uh, I can tell you even just this past weekend, I was uh, part of a a big um, Fur Free Friday protest outside the Canada Goose store and people were waiting in line to get in. But then, um, you know, when they when they saw posters, when they saw video, you did see people reacting. Um, I even I even saw people who um, had been standing in line waiting to get into the store. I, I even saw a couple of them crying when they saw this footage of mm-hmm. um, of coyotes being trapped and killed. So I think where we are now is really just at a point where, um, you know, we we just need to keep putting the truth about these coats in front, you know, in front of people, in front of uh, consumers education is Canada Goose's worst nightmare. And, and, you know, I think that um, they know that the more the truth gets out, they're going to see their business taking a hit. I'm in uh, a place where it's not that cold, but I I always feel cold and I'm just layering up and and I don't have a stitch of animal product on me and I, I feel pretty warm. A lot of people, though, when you say, hey, look, there are alternatives, they go back to their old standby, which is sometimes down, sometimes fur, sometimes those traditional things. Do you notice that it's a generation gap sometimes? Or like, is it the, the older folks who tend to sort of hang on to their, their old down coats? You know, I, I do think that very often buying something like a down coat is is something that people just do out of habit. You know, they they just associate the idea of, of down with, with winter coats. However, I I do think that younger consumers are more savvy. I think that they are, you know, they've grown up taking more time to do things like read labels and research the things they're buying because they because they want their products to be ethical. You know, they care about the environment, they care about animals, they care about um you know, they they care about how their products are made. You know, I think that younger consumers are uh just excited about about things that are high tech and again you know with these with these whether you're talking about fur or down or wool these you know these animal materials are just kind of the the old way of doing things and there's really nothing exciting or innovative about them whereas if you look at the options coming out for uh cruelty free clothing i mean it's incredible everything from these you know high tech materials that we've been talking about to um you know spider silk and leather that that you know is produced in a lab without you know without any animals in the process i mean there are just so many exciting things you know actually on the market and on the horizon um, when it comes to animal free fashion most consumers are interested in that sort of thing i think that younger consumers are the ones um who are making more more demands i think they're label readers i think they pay attention and i think we're seeing a lot of companies responding to that and i i suppose with a younger person once you let them know the truth about canada goose they're quick to respond they're quick to act they stop using it right absolutely and you know in a lot of ways i think that goes for um for most consumers i mean um again i think that so many people buy canada goose who who are buying canada goose coats are doing so because of the label, because of the logo, and they're not really doing any research. They're not, um, you know, they're not putting much thought into what they're buying. They're buying the coats because they've, you know, they've they've seen the logo, as you mentioned, on on a celebrity, or um, you know, it, it's just kind of familiar. I, I absolutely think that that when those people see the facts, their feelings towards that brand um, just change drastically. Okay, so I'm on the street with your dog. Maybe not with your dog. That's a dog, right? <laughs> yeah, or, yeah. or is that or is that you uh, shaking your head with bangles uh, on my, your head? My dog crawled into my lap in the middle of uh, our discussion. 
<laughs> that's all right. That's okay. That's good. You're you're a Peter person. You're you're allowed exactly. to exactly. All right. So I'm walking down the street. I'm wearing proudly my Canada Goose coat because I just saw Skyfall and I, you know, I just saw Daniel Craig, who probably is being replaced because he wore that Canada Goose coat. No, probably not. But I saw him <laughs> and I'm wearing the coat. I'm walking proudly down Fifth Avenue or wherever down, you know, you know, in, in Brooklyn or someplace, which wouldn't be cool. So I probably would not be walking down Brooklyn. I'd be walking and somewhere in Manhattan thinking I'm so cool wearing my Canada Goose down jacket. And you see me and what, what do you tell me? You know, I find that just nicely telling people, you know, just nicely asking people if they've seen, if they know that they're wearing real fur and if they've seen the videos of, of how animals are trapped and killed for that fur, a nice, polite, just informative way can be very effective. I'll show someone on my phone. I'll, you know, I'll just pull up the video on my phone and say, would you like to see this? Especially if, if, if the other person is with a dog, you know, coyotes are really not that different from the dogs who we live with at home. And, and when you see that coyote in the trap, I mean, I, I, I think that if you're a dog lover, it's especially hard. So, you know, I find that just nicely asking people if they're aware, um, of how that fur was obtained and, and, you know, showing them if they're not goes a long way. Have you ever changed anyone's mind right there on the spot, showing a video on your iPhone or, or just talking to that person? Even at um, the, the um, demonstration that I mentioned this weekend that I was part of, um, I mean, I, I was not the one who spoke um, directly to these people, but there were at least two different people who removed their fur trims on the spot and got rid of them um, and said that they would never, never have, have bought their coats if they knew what they were supporting. So, you know, I, I think that people, I think most people are kind and compassionate and, and don't want to cause animals to suffer, especially for something as frivolous as a little bit of trim on a coat. Ashley, I want to thank you for taking the time to talk to us here on the PETA podcast. And before I let you go, I, I just want to ask you this question that I, I ask usually of, of all our guests. Why do you keep doing this? Why are you so motivated to, uh, to do what you do? You know, I think for me, um, it, well, it, it's it's two pronged. I mean, first of all, you know, I I grew up like I think so many of us do with um, cats and dogs who I loved, and when I got to the point where I made the connection between those cats and dogs who were part of my family and the animals who were ending up on my plate and in my closet, and um, you know, who were being used in the circus, and you know, just just all the animals who were not living happy lives like like my animals at home. I it was like knowing that my own family members were were out there being tormented and killed for for all these things that that you know that were totally unnecessary. Um and I still feel that way. And so I I, you know, that's that's what made this cause so important to me. But the other thing I would say is that having been a vegan for over 20 years now, I have seen such incredible changes that have come because people refused to just sit back and, um, you know, and look the other way and say, okay, well, you know, we've always eaten meat, so we'll keep eating meat. Or, you know, while we've always worn leather, we've always gone to the circus, so we'll keep doing these things. The, the way things have changed so quickly um, and so drastically, whether you're talking about being able to walk into, you know, any Starbucks and, and get a soy latte or go to half the big chain restaurants out there and get a veggie burger or the fact that we're actually growing things like leather and wool in laboratories now it's just you know it's it's made me absolutely certain that not only can we move in a better direction most people want to so that's a, a great reason to get up every day and and just you know be committed to uh, you know to creating a cruelty free society yeah. And, and so, you know, I, I just, I, I, I'm so encouraged by all the progress that we, 
have made and that we are making. Um, there's never been a better time because people, I, I think that most people really don't want to be part of causing animals or anyone else to suffer. And the good news is that they don't need to. Ashley Byrne, Associate Director of Campaigns for PETA on Canada Goose's Cold-Blooded Jackets. Check out the videos on PETA.org or take action and go to the show notes for links. You can contact us at PETA.org. You can find me on Twitter at Emil Amok. That's E-M-I-L-A-M-O-K. Or on AMOK.com. Once again, thank you for listening. Check out all our episodes on Apple Podcasts, where you can rate and review the show. It helps get the word out about the issues you care about. And don't forget, you can help the animals and PETA, especially if you have Amazon's Alexa. Just say, Alexa, donate to PETA. Our music is provided by Carbon Works. Check them out on YouTube. And join us again next time for more insight into animal rights and the fight for a cruelty-free world on The PETA Podcast. Thanks for listening. I'm Emil Guillermo.